See this egg? This is your health bar in Arena. And that mouse trap right there? That is RMP. So let's pause. In this moment right here, you have to make a decision. What healer do you trust the most to save you from instantly exploding? Listen, we already know being a healer in Season 3 isn't easy, and sometimes it feels like you have to fight for yourself. Today, we'll go over our preseason predictions and show you which healers reign supreme. So if you want to learn more about the healing meta in 9.2, let's find out in another tier list update. But before we get into it, we wanted to remind you of our rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com. That's right, if you don't gain at least 250 rating while using our website, we give you your money back. And for $4.99 a month, that is definitely a safe investment, especially since you gain access to over 600 premium instructional videos, and an invite to our members only section of our Discord, where you can get the PvP help you need from our team of experts. So what are you waiting for? Learn more about our risk-free service in the links below. Kicking things off, we have one god tier healer that you should already be familiar with. Yes, it's Holy Priest. Really, for anyone who has played Arena this season, this should come as no surprise. But what makes Holy Priest so good? Is it their healing, their damage, or their control? The answer is yes. Holy Priest is probably the most well-rounded healer in Arena because it's good at everything. Its main healing combo of Serenity and Heal got even better thanks to the introduction of tier set bonuses, giving them even more cooldown reduction on their most important instant heal, while also giving an insane buff to casted healing, which gets multiplied even more by increased item levels of the Resonant Words conduit. Holy Priests were already strong, but these set bonuses made their healing even better. And with higher mastery levels, Holy Priest gets some insane value from mastery stacking, which offers some passive damage fodder in the form of a really strong healing over time effect, which ironically is one of the best hots in the game after a Serenity crit. Yes, that's right, Holy Priests have one of the strongest hots in Arena as a class with insane bursty heals. And of course, all of this healing comes with some of the most efficient defensive cooldowns in Arena, with Guardian and Ray of Hope giving them strong answers to heavy burst damage and Divine Ascension and Greater Fade giving them even more tools to deal with getting trained. Altogether, this makes Holy Priest really good at making defensive saves, both for their team and for themselves. And to top everything off, Holy Priest continue to be a major powerhouse on offense, with an even wider array of offensive tools this season. Of course, you're already familiar with Mind Games, which single-handedly opens up kill windows against hybrid DPS and other healers, but now both Kyrian and Night Fae are popular options for Holy, offering their own unique offensive tools in the form of huge damage and cooldown reduction. There was a recent hotfix that tried to address the brute strength of Holy Priest, but it didn't change anything but a minor dent in their overtuned toolkit. At this point, it seems like Holy Priest has pulled noticeably ahead of the pack compared to other healers, and once again, it feels the most complete, which means they work well in every bracket in pretty much any comp. So as the complete package on both offense and defense, Holy Priest takes our pick as the god tier healer of Season 3. But even among the gods, there are still kings, and there is one healer that could challenge Holy Priest this season, and that job belongs to Holy Paladin. If you have been following our tier list since the beginning of the expansion, you already know the turbulent ride Holy Paladins have been on since the beginning of Season 1 and into Season 2, where they went from the best healer to nearly the worst, and now during Season 3, their stocks seem to be trending up. But why? For one, their healing toolkit got shuffled around thanks to tier set bonuses, which directly interact with Light of Dawn. Typically, you don't really think of this as a core Holy Paladin heal, but that has changed, especially now as Holy Paladins are moving away from Kyrian in favor of Necrolord, which gives them even more multipliers on Light of Dawn and Word of Glory healing. The TLDR here is that Holy Paladins have some really strong instant cast burst heals, which just so happens to be good in a bursty meta. And just like Holy Priest, Paladins are more or less a complete package, offering some insane offensive support for their team, which again has come with a shift over to Necrolord. Holy Paladins have been an offensive leader for quite some time, but this is made slightly easier thanks to Vanquisher's Hammer, allowing them to contribute to kills with damage while also boosting healing. So, as the healer that is known for pressing W and running in with their team, Holy Paladin is able to do that in Season 3 and much better than before. While they might not be the most popular healer in 2v2, they are shining in both 3v3 and RBGs, where their newly enhanced AoE healing toolkit is able to meet the new challenges of the evolving Shadowlands meta. So, with our Gods and Kings out of the way, let's go into some other high tier healers that might be on the cusp of greatness with a few balance changes. First up is Disciplined Priest. With the boom in popularity of Holy, what is the role for Disc Priests in the current meta? Are they just healing bots for Feral Druids and Hunters? 
Kind of, but there's more to the picture. Discipline has really solidified itself as the attrition and momentum based healer, working really well in comps that win the game by simply running over the enemy team with raw damage. This is mostly due to tools like Dark Archangel, Pain Suppression, and Barrier, which allows comps like Jungle Cleave to continuously deal damage while having extra bulkiness thanks to off healing. And thanks to Covenant Shifts in Season 2, Disc has even more damage mitigation thanks to Fey Guardians and its duplicating Legendary, which once again seems to be pushing the spec in a direction towards sustained momentum. There is one giant problem that this causes, and it involves a mana bar. As we discussed, Disc wants to be the healer that pushes games to their end in the 3 or 4 minute mark, but it can be difficult actually getting there when mana intensive radiance casts are needed to answer increasingly higher burst damage. Initially in our pre-patch predictions, we thought that its tier set bonuses might alter the way Disc is played, since the 4 sets seem to allow for massive damage combos, but this really didn't happen, and Discipline finds itself as the attrition healer once again, even though it might not want to be. But with access to one of the best comps in the game and with a toolkit that supports a unique playstyle, Disc stays on the A tier once again. Dropping down to join it will be Resto Druids, who have generally underperformed so far in Season 3. Druids saw some buffs in the patch, which unfortunately were offset by a nerf to its primary legendary, but these changes alone aren't enough to explain why it dropped down a tier. In general, Shadowlands Season 3 saw some massive burst damage increases for a lot of meta specs thanks to the introduction of double legendaries and, of course, tier sets. Dealing with high burst damage is probably what Resto Druid is worst at, as its primary strength is mitigating sustained damage through consistent hot healing. This increase in burst damage is exactly why Holy Priest and Holy Paladin seem to be pulling ahead of the pack since their toolkit is primarily designed to counter burst, but Resto Druids and all the other sub S tier healers simply lack the tools needed to get guaranteed saves on their team, which means dealing with seemingly unavoidable losses, especially when it comes to keeping themselves alive, which is much more difficult this season after nerfs to both Fleshcraft and Frenzied Regeneration. But with that said, Resto Druid remains one of the best healers in 2v2, where burst damage is typically easier to deal with. The 2's bracket will likely be littered by Druids for the remainder of the expansion, because they are simply the best at healing sustained damage for a long period of time. So with all of this in mind, we give Resto Druids a cozy spot on the A tier for the remainder of this patch. And with our high tiers out of the way, we have to drop down to the mid tiers and cover our last two healers. This starts with Resto Shaman. Again, what you will find among every healer besides Holy Priest is exactly one huge problem. For Disc, it's mana. For Druids, it's cooldowns. And for Resto Shaman, well, it's healing, which is kind of bad when you are the healer on your team. Right now, Resto Shamans continue to have some of the worst HPS in the game, which forces them to play a more aggressive role on their team, intentionally pairing with bulky melee classes that can help carry the game defensively while trying to end the game as quickly as possible. Tier sets helped offset this slightly, as the 4 set bonus automatically casts Chain Heal when other totems are used. While this looked really promising in the pre-patch, its effect was relatively underwhelming, even after recent hotfixes which seem to address the key issue with Resto Shaman, that they are just the worst healer when it comes to healing. On top of this, one of their best comps from last season, which was WPS, is practically non-existent in 9.2 thanks to key nerfs to both Arms Warriors and Shadow Priests. Again though, not all is doom and gloom as we mentioned. Resto Shaman is still one of the best offensive healers in the game and is truly designed to push in with their team and support with kills through its extensive utility toolkit. But until its healing issues are truly acknowledged, we think it belongs on the B tier for the rest of this patch. And that brings us to the last healer on our list, which of course is Mistweaver Monk, who have a bit of a reverse problem compared to Resto Shamans. You see, unlike Shamans, Monks are actually really good at healing and might even have some of the highest HPS in Arena on paper. But this comes with one problem, that they have to stand still and actually hard cast the majority of their healing output. You can already imagine why this would be such a massive issue. With an abundance of interrupts and micro CCs in Arena, needing to stand still and open your spell cast to kicks is not really sustainable in such a chaotic meta. This also forces Mistweaver monks into really goofy comp selections, as they don't really have the luxury to play with a wide variety of archetypes, and instead find themselves playing a more passive role in Arena with classes that can help offset their weaknesses. There was a buff to Life Cocoon in a recent hotfix, but it is unlikely that this change alone will send monks up a tier. As we always mention, being in the B tier isn't necessarily bad, but with other god tier healers to choose from, it makes it difficult to negotiate your spot on a roster as one of the worst healers. So just to recap, we started this video with a question, who do you trust to save you when things are looking grim? It seems like there are two solid answers to that question, with Holy Priest and Holy Paladin seeming to rise above the rest of our healing cast. 
Again, every other healer seems to have a bit of a Goldilocks problem. They're all good at doing one thing, but suck at something else. Resto Druids might be the best at healing, but they can't really contribute to kills. Resto Shamans might be the best at contributing to kills, but they're the worst at healing. This is really at the core of healer imbalance. Right now, it seems like our god tier healers are the complete package. They do everything you want a healer to do in Arena, and they do it really well. But what do you think about healer balance in 9.2? Are holy priests truly the gods? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, we wanted to remind you about our rating gain guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. If you like to learn more about PvP, we got over 600 videos to help you out, including class courses that show you how to play your spec, and hundreds of arena commentaries where pro players break down gameplay step by step. Joining today will also give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where our team of expert players can answer all of your PvP questions. $4.99 is all it takes to get access to all of our exclusive features and get the rating you've always wanted. So what are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com slash wow. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video. We hope you learned something useful, so let us know how we did by leaving a comment below. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to subscribe to help us both out. We do more than just tier lists on this channel, and chances are, we have something just for you. But as always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.